What's up everybody? I'm the Goji Ryu philosopher and this video will be about a misconception that I've heard a lot around the karate community and that I've even accidentally spread one or two times. I am chagrined that I ever participated in this and even more disturbed that people out there are still continuing to repeat this advice not knowing that it's wrong. If you've ever repeated this advice, I don't blame you. It's a persistent myth in the karate and traditional martial arts communities. That's why, in this video, I want to look into why weight training is not bad for karate. Let's get into it. When you think of people who are strong and who lift all the time, you probably think of people like this. Or this. Or maybe even this. And there's absolutely no denying that these men are strong. However, bodybuilding and preparing for a movie appearance aren't always designed for strength or endurance, but rather for the aesthetics of having a certain form. While bodybuilders and actors do have incredible gains, and are often incredibly strong, there are other techniques that are necessary to achieve that movie-ready physique. The most controversial one is severe dehydration. Hugh Jackman, discussing his preparation for the Wolverine movies, says, You can lose 4 kilos of weight on your surface. You drink a lot of water for a week, getting up to maybe 10 liters a day, and you stop about 30 hours before you film. So for the next 10 hours, you're peeing constantly, and you eat maybe half a baked potato and a few other things that can suck water from the inside. It's not fun, but the results look great. Dehydration can make the skin more taut around the muscles, inflating their appearance. It also creates a vascular appearance, which increases the size of visible veins, and contributes to the physiques that we've come to expect from professional bodybuilders. Professional UFC fighters also use this technique, sometimes to a less extreme degree, to make weight for weigh-ins prior to a fight. They are then given 24 hours to rehydrate, meaning that they generally fight at a higher weight than their weigh-in. Severe or repeated dehydration can lead to massive health problems, including a much higher risk of heart attacks and strokes, and for that reason most medical professionals heavily discourage this practice. This is one of the reasons that bodybuilders in particular might not excel in the martial arts, but clearly many mixed martial arts fighters are able to use a similar technique and stay in fighting shape. Part of the reason is that, for MMA fighters, this tactic isn't a part of bodybuilding, and isn't done for the aesthetics it provides, but is rather a complement to both strength and endurance training. In contrast to bodybuilders, athletes who train for competitive strength often have much different physiques. As an example, take Hideki Shrek Sekine, an incredibly strong and heavy jiu-jitsu practitioner and MMA fighter. His physique is much stockier, and he has much less definition of muscles, especially in his abdominal region, and he's an absolute beast. His physique is similar to what you see in strongman competitions, where competitors often have the most muscle distributed around their core, which allows them to perform feats of immense strength. This type of training is clearly very well suited for martial arts, and is in fact extremely useful if you're planning on taking part in competition. Obviously, grappling arts are very well suited to the development of strength, but this can even improve the power of strikes. So why do many karateka still think that strength training can harm their martial arts? Well, to put it simply, it comes down to a myth about muscle types. You've probably heard about the two types of muscle fiber, slow twitch and fast twitch. Slow twitch muscle fibers are supposed to be used in slower resistance activities, such as lifting a heavy weight, whereas fast twitch muscle fibers are more suited for short bursts of explosive energy, like throwing a punch. The reason that I've heard that so many karateka avoid weight training is that they believe that it develops the slow twitch muscles, but weakens or detracts from the fast twitch muscles. Now this isn't entirely false, but it makes some bad assumptions. Firstly, the dichotomy between slow and fast twitch, like many other binaries, is more of a spectrum with two correlated clusters. Certain muscle fibers can be partially fast twitch and partially slow twitch, and within that hybrid area some of these are more slow or more fast than others. Second, however, is the idea that building one's slow twitch muscles up inhibits the development of fast twitch muscles. There is an element of strength to a punch, and slow twitch muscle growth will help you add that strength. However, the myth that focusing on weight or strength training will cause your fast twitch muscles to atrophy stems, I think, from an entirely different type of training that some strength routines de-emphasize. You see, in martial arts training, cardio and endurance are both incredibly important. Strength circuits that are looking to build up the ability to lift large weights for low reps often de-emphasize cardio, resulting in otherwise very strong people who get gassed very easily in a martial arts context, where endurance is also an incredibly important factor. Lifting weights, even lifting heavy weights, doesn't stiffen the muscles or joints or make your punches and kicks slower and less impactful. However, low endurance does cause people to gas out sooner and makes them unable to throw those really powerful strikes. 
Weightlifting can actually add an important dimension to your karate training. In fact, this is something that even the old masters knew to be the case. Several historical hojo undo training implements, such as the chi ishi, ishi sashi, nigiri game, and tan, used by karateka such as Miyagi Chojun, are all different types of weights, used for strength training in much the same way as modern implements. Weightlifting and strength training are both vital parts of karate. However, these types of training were always supplemented by bodyweight calisthenics and cardio endurance exercises. Make sure to follow a balanced exercise program, and when in doubt, consult with a personal trainer before making assumptions about what types of training are and are not good for your martial arts. Thanks for watching this video, and I hope you all enjoyed it. For those of you interested in strength training routines that are specifically designed for martial artists, Jesse Enkamp has a great series called Strength Training for Karate that contains a lot of exercises to develop muscular strength without neglecting your cardio or flexibility. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the like button, and feel free to leave a comment letting me know what your favorite type of exercise is. Personally, I do a fair amount of trail running when I'm not in the dojo, and I'd love to hear how the rest of you stay fit, build up your endurance, and your strength. If you want to see more karate videos, hit the subscribe button as well as the notification button so that you see when I post new videos. I've been the Goju Ryu Philosopher, and do you even lift, bro?